Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Military operations always require transport aircraft capable of supplying cargo efficiently and quickly. This is why new aircraft of this type are constantly being developed, always seeking to improve various aspects such as cargo capacity or reduction in fuel consumption. An example of these aircraft is the Atlas A400M, developed by Airbus to replace aging transport aircraft such as the Transall C-160 and the Lockheed C-130 Hercules. Different European countries needed aircraft with greater capacity for strategic and tactical airlift missions, including transporting heavy and oversized cargo, performing airdrops, and medical evacuation. That is why Airbus began developing the Atlas program in 2003, beginning its assembly in 2007 at its facilities in Sevilla, and completing the aircraft with its first flight in 2009. This A400M was part of the first 180 planes ordered by seven European countries, being delivered from 2013 onward. Airbus has factories located in different European countries that manufacture this enormous aircraft. These sites are responsible for creating specific components or sections of the aircraft to be later put together in a general assembly site. In Germany, Skilled technicians and engineers work in the Bremen and Stade sites for the fuselage section manufacturing and the pre-assembly process of the hydraulic, electrical and flight control systems. Crucial components like the center wing boxes and the plane's radar and measuring systems are manufactured in the Nantes factory in France. With dedication, the workers at the Tablada facility in Spain focus on preparing the power plant, flap support fairings, and horizontal tailplane. This facility also implements a digitalization environment, linking people and systems in an operative ecosystem to streamline production. Once each subassembly and component are manufactured, they are transported inside the giant Airbus Beluga carrier, which has an extraordinary carrying capacity and long-range capabilities to move large components like the wings and fuselage sections. These components are sent to the main assembly site in San Pablo, Spain where various stations are responsible for assembling specific sections. At Station 72, a dedicated team of experts oversees the structural integration of the wings and the installation of the engine pylons. Advanced testing methods in Station 70 are employed to check for wing fuel leakage, detecting even the smallest irregularities. With the fuselage assembled, the technicians mount the plane's four Europrop TP400 engines and the auxiliary power units. The avionics and digital systems are routed throughout the assembly, and the necessary software is installed and tested. 
With the plane assembled, its exterior is painted with the aircraft's livery, markings, and protective coatings expertly applied. Finally, the A400M makes its first flight after completion, showcasing its robust structure, advanced avionics, and powerful engines. When the A400M begins an operation, whether in real missions or during exercises such as Mobility Guardian, the same preparation procedures are carried out before takeoff. The overview of the mission, including the objectives and instruments used, is specified during the mission briefings. With such information, the crew is prepared for the possible conditions that might be ahead during the flight. If cargo must be transported, it is distributed inside the plane depending on the type and weight of the load to ensure proper weight distribution. After the pre-flight inspections on the landing gear, control surfaces and engines, the plane is taxied onto the runway. Here, the pilots check with air traffic control to ensure they have the final takeoff clearance. Thanks to its design and the capacity of its engines, the A400M can perform steep angle takeoffs. Its four Europrop engines can produce approximately 11,000 shaft horsepower, giving the necessary thrust to achieve those climb rates. This plane can create more lift at lower speeds by combining high lift devices like the leading edge slats and trailing edge flats. This helps the A400M to take off in short runways or on prepared airstrips which is ideal for the tactical capability of this aircraft. During the preparation of aircraft such as the A400M, even during moments such as assembly or maintenance, technicians seek to implement tools that make it easier for them to carry out these procedures, ensuring greater speed and precision in their results. Of these tools, there is the electrical hoist kit developed by Airbus's ground support equipment team, which is used to install the engines on planes or test beds. This kit is designed to facilitate the precise and efficient handling and mounting of heavy aircraft engines. It comprises a ground power supply, a central control unit, and two rear and front electrical hoists. Such hoists are connected to the control box, which is already pre-programmed with precise loads and characteristics for the entire Airbus fleet. Therefore, operators indicate what type of engine and aircraft they will work with, and the system activates the hoist-integrated dynamometers to ensure a correct load distribution. These instruments show the developments that Airbus has had with different devices to improve the quality of work of its operators and the efficiency of the pilots themselves within an airplane. The implementation of touchscreen controls in the cockpit of the A350 XWB has improved the interactivity the pilot has with navigation, communication, and system management. This feature allows pilots to perform their tasks more efficiently by gathering flight-related information in one place.
Those displays allow better flexibility during the cockpit preparation, so pilots can use the touchscreen to input data with one hand while managing other controls with the other hand. This development of innovative technologies and methodologies has led Airbus to implement devices such as drones to carry out aircraft inspection tasks. Such an inspection tool can work efficiently without the need for manual control thanks to its automatic navigation system. Here, a predefined route the drone can follow is created based on the type of inspection and aircraft model. Once the path is defined for inspection, the drone can fly around the plane and capture high-quality images of the surface using an integrated visual camera and a laser detection sensor. Thus, the inspection can be carried out much faster than traditional methods, reducing operator risks. With all its designs and developments, Airbus also focuses on testing its systems and aircraft, such as negative G-testing. This condition usually occurs during times of turbulence or in a situation that requires a sudden, large forward movement of the side stick. If subjected to sub-zero G-flight, fluid flow may be disrupted in certain aircraft systems. This can cause problems with engine operation, oil pressure, fuel system, hydraulic system, etc. For this reason, tests are carried out under these conditions to check the operation of these systems and their ability to return to normal once the plane returns to positive G. Other hazardous events that can occur to an aircraft are crosswinds during takeoff and especially during landing. Thus, the plane is tested to ensure it can withstand winds of at least 30 to 40 knots. During such tests, the pilots are also trained to employ a technique known as the crab's approach. The aircraft aligns with the runway with its nose pointing slightly into the wind, which helps to counter the side force of the wind and ease the handling of the plane. These extreme weather conditions encouraged Airbus to implement two tests that help understand the operation and response of aircraft to these conditions. The first one is water trough testing, which focuses on studying the handling of planes when taking off or landing on runways filled with water. Here, the aircraft approaches the 328-foot water trough with an average depth of 0.8 inches. And then, its powerful engines generate a mesmerizing spray as they displace the water surface. The second test includes implementing rigorous climatic tests within a laboratory, where the aircraft systems and structures are subjected to the harshest environmental conditions. The aircraft can be exposed to a temperature range of 115 degrees Fahrenheit to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. This is done to ensure critical components continue functioning. These developments of advanced systems and technologies have boosted both the military and commercial aeronautical industry. This is reinforced by implementing various performance tests to ensure the quality of these devices and aircraft.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.